Hey guys, this is Undercover Dudes all the way from Down Under with the top 10 free to play first person shooters of 2017. Line of Sight is a game that is developed by Black Spot Entertainment, the studio made up of former members of Dubik, the original makers of Combat Arms. Line of Sight has a major military feel, but it also incorporates superpowers which mixes up the gameplay. A decent but relatively small amount of weapons is balanced out by an assortment of world design maps catered for competitive gameplay. Saying that, Line of Sight is going down the eSports direction, with a Go For Line of Sight league now running. Going back to more of the casual aspects for Line of Sight, there is a major customization system for your weapons. You can really go and make it your own, adding suppressors, different magazines, different bullet types, barrels, laser sights, paint jobs, among more. Blackshot Mercenary Warfare FPS, otherwise known as just as Black Spot, is a military-based first-person shooter by Vertigo Games, and this game, in my opinion, embodies a solid free-to-play FPS. When you create your account, you have access to one of four characters, two speed-based and two defense-based, obviously one male and one female, respectively. Map-wise, there is a bit of choice, however, the maps are really not that inspired, generally symmetrical and quite bland. Mode-wise, it's kind of the same deal, the stock standard FPS stuff, team deathmatch, free-for-all, bomb defusal, etc. Blackshot definitely went under my radar, however, popular Twitch streamer Summit1G played this game on just a random stream, and he really enjoyed it. And, saying that, I enjoyed this game as well, so I'm definitely going to go ahead and give it a thumbs up as he did as well. Ghost in for sure, Standalone Complex First Assault Online is developed by Neeple and published by Nexon. The gameplay definitely feels back to basics, but it's rock solid and works really well. The game features all of the prominent Section 9 members from the anime, with each having a special ability they can use in-game. For example, Paz has his hyper sprint ability that greatly increases his running speed and jump height. There is a decent amount of weapons to go and play around with, but I do have to say, like Line of Sight, the customizations of the weapon in this game is really extensive, with barrels, scopes, extended mags, laser sights, etc. being equipable. There is a decent amount of maps, with a lot of inspiration from the anime, but there is only Team Deathmatch, Terminal Conquest, Demolition, and Ghost Assault available, with Ghost Assault being a kind of cat and mouse type game mode that definitely goes and plays with your senses. Combat Arms, a first person shooter I have quite a bit of experience with. CA at its core is a fantastic game, with great weapon mechanics and movement. Content wise there is a ton to play with, a decent selection of world design maps and classic modes on top of an extremely large arsenal of weapons. CA is definitely an old game, it was first released in 2008, but saying that, for 2017 Nexon has a few updates up their sleeve, a new graphics system, a new user interface, and a new matchmaking system to go and name a few. We'll have to go and see how this affects an already fantastic game, but from my hands-on look with the graphics and UI, Combat Arms might be getting a high position in this list when I make it next year. One big plus is the extremely active community. you 100% be able to go and find a game regardless of where you come from, and that is a really, really good trait. Phantom is, is an FPS that has been in and out of betas, but this really isn't a problem with the studio Dream Execution having previous experience with the historic free-to-play FPS War Rock. Phantom is, is a class-based FPS, with players being able to use a sniper class, among others, that being the Engineer, Rifleman, Pointman, and Destroyer. Each of these have a unique set of abilities on top of the select weapons that only that class can go and use. The saying that maps and modes are not that inspired, with Team Deathmatch, Free For All, Search and Destroy and Domination being among the list. Phantom is definitely has a matured Battlefield-like feel, but it also has that classic War Rock touch mixed in together and that overall is a great, great combination. Special Force 2 is straightforward, a competitive free-to-play FPS. It follows on from the original Special Force, but everything is cranked up to 11. The gameplay is extremely realistic, with fast time to kills and high recoil. I don't generally go and talk about graphics, however the graphics in Special Force 2 are top notch for what this game is trying to go and do. It's not going to go and rival Crisis or Battlefield or Call of Duty and whatnot, but the Unreal 3 engine, it does some work, and it complements the competitive gameplay well. No blinding effects that could go and make a difference in a 1v1 fight. There is casual modes like Team Deathmatch in a 6v6 format, however the search and destroy type modes are the bread and butter of Special Force 2. Some games in this genre have a low amount of maps, Special Force 2 has 32 maps which is quite a lot. There is also a big emphasis on playing with friends and clans, and hence clan wars are pushed to the forefront. 
Special Force 2 has had a weird time with publishing rights. It was originally published in North America and Europe, then the North America rights went away. Now the North America rights are back, so you can go and play it in both of those regions. But saying that, if you come from Australia like I am, or any country outside those uh, outside Europe or North America, you won't be able to go and play this game as there is an IP address block. And that is a little bit sad because Special Force 2 is a great game. But if you're inside the supported regions, go and check this game out. Link will be in the description below. Heroes and Generals is a well-loved World War II shooter that has its place as one of the most popular free-to-play FPS games on Steam. Unlike anything else on this list, Heroes and Generals is a game that is played on a massive battlefield with a ton of friends at your side and a ton of foes you have to go and mow down. Conquest-like modes give this game a massive battle one feel, among the fact that you can go and use tanks and planes as well. Weapon modification is abundant, so each player can go and tweak their weapon to what they feel is perfect, with some really, really fine detail. However, there is a few complaints from users, especially on how hard it is for your computer to go and run, and the overpowered nature of some of the fractions. Regardless, it is still played by a large amount of users, and is for sure a great and really, really fun game to go and play. Ironsight is an in-development Korean FPS by Weeble Games. Despite this game not having a worldwide release as of day, I still wanted to go include this game due to it coming off as a free-to-play Battlefield and Call of Duty hybrid. Gorgeous graphics with gameplay reminiscent of the two titles I mentioned before, Ironsight is trying to go and provide the paid experience to the free to play market. I honestly hope this game does come to the west, as it would go and rival our CODs and Battlefields into a tug of war type scenario of paid vs free, and in the end it makes us the players the victors as each game has to try to go and one up each other in order to go and keep their player base. Coming in at the number 2 spot, we have got Warface. Warface is developed by Crytek and is now being published by industry veterans My.com. Warface is by far one of the most polished free-to-play FPS games, which comes as no surprise as Crytek are known to produce high-quality games. The premise is quite simple. Four different classes, Rifleman, Engineer, Medic and Sniper, with each being pretty self-explanatory. Weapons belong to a specific class, so for example only the sniper can go and use sniper rifles and so on, but with that said, each class has a unique trait that go and differentiate itself on the battlefield, so even though you're kind of lacking by not having a sniper rifle and let's say the rifleman, on the rifleman class you can go and chuck down ammo, and so you have to go and balance the team composition a little bit so you don't go and stack with one individual class. Movement is a little bit slower than other games, but it still retains the casual aspect of run and gun with a little bit of a knee slide that can go and put your opponents off. Weapon mechanics are straightforward, it is mostly point and click, meaning that anyone can hop on and have some fun, but it's really reaction based, so if you're a faster shot, you're definitely going to go and get the one up over your opponent. The maps, however, are fantastic. It really shows off the beautiful graphics. Crytek have really tried to go and produce the best looking free to play first person shooter they can, within reason of course, you don't want to go and rival their crisis, but saying that, this game looks really good for what it is, a free to play first person shooter. Overall, Warface might not be the most original game, but regardless, it is by far one of the best executed. Few, few complaints I can go and say. The only one that some people go and say once in a while is there might be a hacker or two, but saying that I haven't gone and experienced a hacker in this game for quite a long time. The last game I want to go and talk about today is Dirty Bomb, which is a first person shooter developed by Splash Damage and published by Nexon. Graphics wise, the Unreal Engine puts in some solid, solid work. On top of this, the game's original maps are getting updated and they look great as well. Talking about the maps, they are made specifically for the mode in mind, and that's great since Dirty Bomb is objective focus. However, the maps, they are not boring, they are very, very inspired. For example, Cathedral, it's an escort map where you have to go and first escort an armoured vehicle all the way to a certain point in the map, and then you have to go and bring these bombs to the final destination by hand. While other maps go and entail planting C4 at a site, and then pushing forward after it's been destroyed, and once you go to the final objective, you blow it up, you go and win the game. There is a ton of stuff in this game that really goes and pushes the genre outside its comfort zone, and that's what I really, really enjoy. But saying that, Splash Damage hasn't gone and forgot about one of the most influential modes in FPS gaming history, and that is Bomb Diffusal. In Dirty Bomb, it's called Execution. Character-wise, there is a large assortment of mercenaries who have unique weapons and abilities. 
At the moment, there is 19 possible mercs that you can go and choose from. But saying that, you can only go and swap between three of them in game. So people can't go and do some kind of weird strats where you just go and pull old snipers and whatnot. You have to go and balance your team beforehand. And that is really, really important. There really is no reason why you shouldn't be playing Dirty Bomb like right now. It puts up a great experience, and even though it feels a little bit different than, let's say, Battlefield and Call of Duty and whatnot, I think that's really good because it's trying to be a unique game rather than just going and copying the mainstream and putting it to free to play. That's something that, let's say, Ironside and Blackshot try to go and do. They do it well, but when you have a really inspired game, overall, I think that's really, really worthwhile to go and check out. With all of that said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this top 10 list. If you did, make sure to go and give it a like, rate it, but other than that, Undercover Dudes, all the way from Down Under, out.